What's going on guys? It's John here from Hot Take Hockey to give you my prediction for the opening night lineup for the Montreal Canadiens for the 2019-2020 season. So if you are here, please subscribe to the channel, drop a like. Every like counts guys, so if you're watching, if you're listening right now, please do a brother a favor and drop a like and of course subscribe for more content. But for the Habs, let's talk about the opening night lineup. So we're going to talk about the forward group, the defense group, the two goalies to start the year, the power play, the penalty kill. We're going to go over all that in this video. So let's start right with the forward group, and here I am. So let me know also if you like this format better than the previous lineup prediction videos, and also, I'll say it again at the end of the video, let me know the teams you want to see, because I'm going to do all of them, but obviously, uh, whatever has the higher demand, I'm going to do those videos next. So Let's get right into this one, which is on the Habs. So you see that top line, Tatar, Dano, Gallagher, that top line. It worked last year. It was so successful. Don't fix what ain't broke. So I think for that top line, you got to keep it together, regardless of maybe some other centers coming behind Dano. But the chemistry comes before uh, that for sure. And I think if you're wanting a t another year of Tatar and what he did, another year of what Gallagher did, so I, I like that top line quite a bit. And then you look at the second line, and I already know Montreal Canadiens fans are going to be on me, but you got to do something. When you have a whole bunch of centers, and that's a good problem to have, you got to move a couple players to the wing. And Max Domi has the experience on the wing, and it doesn't mean he's going to stay there. But at the very least, for the opening night, you're going to put Max Domi on the wing potentially if... Paling makes it, if Suzuki makes it. And you see right, right on my lineup, Suzuki has to slide to the right as well. You're not going to have, in my opinion, a guy like Paling or Suzuki on the fourth line for the entirety of the season. It's just not going to happen. If Suzuki makes the team, it's going to be in a top nine role, at the very least. Same thing with Paling. And so I have the second line of Domi, Kokinemi, and Lekkonen. Kokinemi and Lekkonen, when they played together last year, they played well. And then you have Domi on the left wing, more experience. And then Jonathan Duran on the third line beside Paling Suzuki. Paling Suzuki, the two rookies next to a guy that was very inconsistent last year in Jonathan Duran. Maybe he finds his way with two younger players. And then the fourth line of Paul Byron, Nate Thompson, and Joel Armia. Ar Armia and Byron are going to be there for sure. Nate Thompson, I feel like it's either going to be Thompson or Nick Cousins in that fourth line center role. Jordan Wheel can also play center, but he's more comfortable on the wing, so maybe he slots in there as well. Uh, Charles Houdon will definitely be there in my opinion, but he might be a healthy scratch on the opening night lineup. And overall, guys, I think if we're looking at these forwards, Tatar, Gallagher, Domi, and Duran will probably be on the number one unit. I feel like Kotkanemi and Paling could jump in there as well, uh, but those two guys could also be on the second unit, and, and if Nick Suzuki's there then he would slot onto the second power play unit. And then one other player, maybe it's an Arturi Lekkonen. The defense, whether you have, if you have those four forwards on the number one unit, it'll probably just be Shea Weber. And then Jeff Petrie slides over to the second unit. But then if one of those forwards slides over to the second unit, then you could have Weber and Petrie on the first unit and then have Victor Mete on the second unit. It obviously depends what Claude Julien prefers for the upcoming year with getting guys like Paling and Suzuki potentially for a full year, depending on how they do in training camp. But let's move on to the defense. So the defense, Victor Mete and Shea Weber, you're going to keep that top pairing together. Victor Mete is going to learn beside Shea Weber. And you brought in Ben Sherratt in free agency. He's the perfect partner for a guy like Jeff Petrie, arguably your most offensive uh, guy on that back end in terms of production. Victor Mete is there, but he's going to keep on developing. So Petrie beside Chara, I love that top four for Montreal. And then Kulak and Folin. Uh, Folin you brought from Philly. One year left on his contract. He can play on that right side. And then Kulak, very underrated in my opinion, former Calgary Flame. I liked what he did last year for the Montreal Canadiens. And then Mike Riley, your seventh defense. And then to close out your 23-man roster with the two goalies, Carey Price, when he's on the top of his game, he's one of the best in the league. And Keith Kincaid, you brought in from free agency as well at $1.5 million per. So Sherratt and Kincaid, I love those signings in free agency, and they definitely complement your uh, lineup quite well. So I would like what the Montreal Canadiens are doing here. If Paling and Suzuki can crack the opening night lineup out of training camp, then you have a lot to be excited about if you're a Montreal Canadiens fan. So let me know what you think about my lineup. And if I'm talking about the power power play, I also got to mention the penalty kill. So your penalty kill, if we're going to go back to the forward group, if you're looking at that penalty kill, and that's why I also have Nate Thompson there. Nate Thompson's very solid on your face-off, and he can be on your penalty kill. Paul Byron there as well. Paul Byron 
Also going to get a couple shorthand goals there. Joel Armia, probably going to be on your penalty kill. So guys like that, you'll probably see on the penalty kill. Another one, maybe Dano or Gallagher, one of those two. So um, I think the Montreal Canadiens have quite a few two-way forwards. They're not going to uh, get disappointed in the back end for most of their players. I would say one player that struggles in my mind would be Jonathan Drouin. I really think Drouin needs to fix his overall game. I think that's why Montreal Canadiens fans are getting really frustrated with him in some parts want to trade him. But you know what? Maybe if he gets that fresh start with Paling and Suzuki, it can really work out. So again, thank you for watching this video. Subscribe if you like the content. Subscribe for more content. Drop a like. Every like counts. Let's get those likes up and comment your thoughts, changes, what you want for the channel. And... I have a lot of fun with this, so thank you for all the support. So this was John from Hot Take Hockey. Have a good one. Peace out.